Welcome! In this series of short videos, we will look at topics for the PowerBasic console compiler. Today we will look at how to determine the screen metrics from inside a console application. Today we are going to look at the console compiler's use of the graphics window, by creating an application that displays no console and just a graphics window. This will allow you to give the user a richer output on screen from the console compiler. There are quite a few commands that operate on the graphics windows, so we are going to start off with a blank application and build it up from there. So since we want to build an application that has a graphics window but no console, the first thing we need to do in our application is to turn the console off. This can be done quite easily by using the console off command at the beginning of your application, so a console window will not be displayed to the user. Next we want to create our graphics window to allow us to draw to it. So I'm creating a local variable called hwin, and we're using the graphic window command. There are two forms of the graphic window command, the graphic window new and the graphic window text. If you don't back command word after graphic window, it assumes we're doing graphic window new. We'll cover the graphics window's text in a later video. So this command takes a number of parameters, the first being the title of the window, in this case the words graphic window. Then we have four numbers. The first two are the x and y coordinates of where you want your window to begin on screen in pixels. The next two parameters are the width and the height of the window. And the final variable at the end of the line, hwin, is the variable into which we will place the handle of this graphics window. When our application finishes, we can close off the graphics window. It's not absolutely necessary to destroy the graphics window, as when your application terminates, it will automatically be closed off. But we'll put the command in anyway. So to close off the graphics window, we merely need to put graphic window end followed by the variable that holds the handle of the window. You may occasionally need to use this command when you have multiple graphics windows on screen at the same time, and you may wish to close one at a particular point in your application. So now that we've created the graphics window, we now have to give a command to tell your application that all subsequent graphics commands are going to be directed towards this specific window. And we can do that with the graphics attach command. The graphics attach command takes the first parameter being the handle of the window that we wish to attach. The ID number that follows that is always zero and was designed for future implementation, so that must be zero because it's not in use yet. The final parameter is optional, in this case it's the redraw parameter. If you have the redraw command in here, it means any change you make to your graphics window will not be displayed to the user until you issue the graphics redraw command. This vastly speeds up the speed at which you can actually display graphics to the user's screen. So if we place a sleep command of 2 seconds after that, just to allow us a couple of seconds to see what's going to appear on the screen. And if we try running our application now, we will see a graphics window appears on screen, albeit briefly for 2 seconds, before being closed down and the application terminating. So we'll want this graphics window appearing on screen until the user closes the application, so we need to give the user a mechanism to actually do this. So we're going to put a loop in here. We'll first enter our graphics redraw command, because we're going to be putting commands before that that will draw information to the screen. Now we can create our loop. What this loop is doing is using the graphic in key command. To capture any key pressed on the keyboard, and populate the in key var variable. If the value held within that variable is equal to the escape key, then we can exit our loop. If not, we will sleep for 100 milliseconds and run the loop once more. So we will declare that variable at the top of our function and we'll try running the application again. So now our graphics window appears on screen, but it is not disappearing. And any key pressed on the keyboard will not do anything until you press the escape button, and that terminates the application. So this gives us a mechanism by which we can stay inside the application until a specific key is pressed. 
To prevent the user clicking on the X at the top right hand corner of the application, we can add an extra command to our application. And that is the graphics window stabilize command, followed by the variable which holds the handle of the window. If we run our application now, and the user attempts to click on the X, the X is greyed out and the user cannot close the graphics window. However, we can still exit the application by pressing the escape key on the keyboard. Amongst the many commands for graphics windows are commands to minimize the window, to hide the window, to redisplay a hidden window to the user using the normalize command, but there is not a command to maximize the console window on the screen. But I'm going to show you a mechanism by which you can achieve this. First of all, we will get the window's size in pixels back from the graphic object. Now we know the size of the window because we specified it when we created the window. 680 wide by 580 in height. So we will create two new variables and we'll use the graphic get size command to pull back the size of our window. Now in order to see these variables, I'm going to display them on the graphics window itself. And we can do that quite easily by using the graphic print command. Printing the words window size, followed by the width and the height of our graphics window. If we run that now, we'll see the values it's putting on the screen are 686 by 609. Now these numbers are larger than the numbers we specified. This is because the window has a title bar and a slight margin at the side. So in order to make this screen a little more visible, we're going to increase the size of our font. So let's go back to the code and set that up. So we're going to create a new handle for the font. And we're going to specify the font using the font new command. In this case, we're going to be using courier new 18 point. There are other options on the font new, but we'll leave it using the default values for these at the moment. And before we start printing to the graphics window, we will use the graphics set font command to specify the font we want to display on the window. And just to be tidy, at the end of our application, we will close off the font and free up the memory it used. So if we try running the application now, we'll see the text is a lot bigger and much easier to read. So we've captured the physical window size, can we capture the client area? Again, we can use another graphic command, the graphic get client, and we'll create two brand new variables to store that information. Width var client and height var client. And we'll put in more graphics print statements to display those values on the screen. And there is the client size. And as we look back at our code, we'll see that the client size 680 by 580, which matches perfectly to the sizes we specified when we created the graphics window. So how can we get the window larger? How can we match the window to the size of our desktop? So there are a few commands we can actually use for this. There are Windows API calls we can use to get the system metrics, and there's a metrics command within PowerBasic itself. So we're going to use the metrics command. So we'll create a new function to pull this information back. So here is our new function. It takes two parameters, x and y, which are our width and height. And these are values it's going to return to the calling function. And we're using the metrics command, using metrics maximized x and metrics maximized y. And we can display this information on our graphics window by first calling the new function with the two parameters, long x and long y. And then we can print them using the graphics print command. So we try running our application now, and the numbers we get back are 1936 by 1056. And these numbers are slightly higher than you would expect from an HD screen. So these numbers will need to be reduced. So there's one extra bit of information we need to put into our new function. If we reduce the value for long x and long y by the scroll vertical size and the scroll horizontal size. If we try running that now, we'll see we'll get 1919 by 1039. The 1039 is smaller than you'd expect for the 1080, because it's taking into account the 
taskbar at the bottom of your screen. If we increase the size of the taskbar and run this again, we will see the value goes down as the taskbar has become larger. So now that we know how big the screen actually is, can we set the graphics window to be maximized? So we can use the graphics set size command to set the width and the height of the graphics window. And we can set the location of the graphics window to 00, zero which is the top left hand corner of the screen. If we try running this now, we can see our graphics window is now populating the entire screen. There's a very small border around the right hand side and slightly below. But this is quite acceptable. We can check to see if it handles the increase in size of the taskbar. And if we run it now, we'll see that our window has quite correctly taken up the size of the taskbar and adjusted accordingly. So this gives us a very easy way of determining the size our graphic window needs to be in order to fill the whole screen. By default, when you run your application, it will appear on the primary monitor of the computer. As it's quite possible your users may have more than one monitor attached to the computer. You can quite easily determine just how many monitors they have by running a simple API call. So I'm going to create a new function called monitor count. And this is going to determine how many monitors we have in the system. The API call we're making is to get system metrics. And it takes a single parameter, which in this case is a constant defined in the Windows API include files that ship with PowerBasic. In this case, we're using the SMC monitors. And using our graphic print command, we can pull that information out and display it on the screen for the user. But in order to make use of these Windows API calls, we need to include the Win32 API encode library. This library ships with PowerBasic. So if we try running the application now, we'll see it is correctly determined that there are four monitors attached to this computer. So in summary, what we've achieved today is we have created a console application which displays to the user a graphics window and no console window. The graphics window is maximized for the full size of the user's screen. Should the user have a taskbar which is bigger than normal, the program will take that into account when it's maximizing the screen. We can also determine quite easily the size of the area of the screen to which we can draw. And we can also determine just how many monitors the user has connected to this computer. So this has been a brief introduction to what we can do with a graphics window within the console compiler. Hopefully you'll find this code useful in your applications, but that's it for today. Thank you for watching.